Hello and welcome to a brand new episode brought to you on the Four Eyed Radio Network. If you want to see more shows, eh, check out foureyedradio.com, eh? Sorry about that. Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this Four Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Let's face it, boobs are the greatest thing ever. Right now, this guy has an office boner. For some reason, women keep trying to cover their lady prizes up. Sometimes, they even wear undershirts, which is a real fucking buzzkill. Well, now some asshole has invented this new boob apron, which is like a piece of a shirt that women attach to their bras so they can feel like they're wearing an undershirt when it's really just a boner-killing titkerchief. If you wear a boob apron, then you can look like a librarian, a receptionist, or someone who's allergic to parties. Why wear an undershirt when it gives you breast wedgie? And boob aprons are even worse. Oh, look, I'm pretending to work. For some reason, a guy telling a girl she has nice hooters is bad. But boob apron takes all the fun out of a date in no time. Nice white wine, dick. Boob apron has fancy fabrics and was made by slave children overseas, which makes wearing boob apron worse because now you support slavery. Life sucks enough as is, and at times, getting a peek at cleavage is all men have to look forward to. Why would anybody invent something to ruin a man's happiness and take away his dreams, regardless of what fucking colors this dream robber comes in? This is America, where we're supposed to make dreams come true, not take them away with a fucking fun bag napkin. Wouldn't this fake job be better if these girls could could see each other's cleavage and kiss? Isn't life all about being proud of the gifts God gave you? Because believe me, if guys had boobs, we'd only leave the house to show them off. Oh look, it's the white wine dickhead again, fag. Hey, hop on the phone now, and you can double the buzzkill factor and get twice as many boob aprons as before for the same price. whoop de fucking do Yeah, just order a tall stack of these blue ballers and ruin the fun for everyone. And don't forget to ask the operator if he or she has any other ideas on how to make life less fun. Like a mouthwash that gives you poison ivy. Or french fries with herpes. That'd be just great. Boob apron. Worst fucking invention ever. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Ah, the boob apron. That's about as political as we get here. (laughs) (laughs) I've placed in my order... Uh, it's like ordering <laughs> French fries with herpes. Thank you. I'll, t- I'll take an extra large. <laughs> Mix, supersize it, or whatever the fuck people do. Mm. Wait, so that'd be okay for you to have one, but not for girls to have one. Yeah, no, because I, I go out a lot to show mine off, and I, I think it'd be better if maybe I did have the boob apron to close my shirt up. Perks of having a job. Guys should have to get that for like the guys that wear the deep V-neck shirts, oh, you douchebags. That's only sexy if you have hair <laughs> no, bustling no. out of it. <laughs> So it's only sexy in Italy? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, no. I, yeah, that's gross everywhere. Man. Oh, hey, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> we uh, we missed you last week. Sorry we didn't put, put an episode out for you. Nancy vacationed in Hawaii, as she wealthily does. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sick and then preparing for a show, so... Whatever. This is free, you guys. I, what can I tell you? <laughs> I can't argue with free. No, but episode 30, so we made it to 30 episodes. Congratulations, Nance. Thanks for sticking through it. Yeah, you too. Um, and thanks for everybody listening to it, man. I think we've gotten better at it and having a good time. And uh, We appreciate all the support. And uh, speaking of support, get your boob apron. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and your candy bra necklace. Let's... Um, let's... You know, uh, I was going to say something funny. I don't think it's funny, so I, I actually say it. I'll filtered make it myself. No, nah, it wasn't even close. Like It was about edible underwear. Like I, I guess that really exists. I, I've heard it does. I've never seen it. But could you imagine, like, somebody, Valentine's Day, like, has sex with their wife, and they have the edible underwear, and there's leftovers, and he brings it to work <laughs> the next day. I'm like, going to pack it in my kid's lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just delicious. 
But I have I've leftovers. Not going to let it go to waste. Someone to buy me that. Yeah. Actually, can't let that go to waste. You know, I'm just going to have to go buy myself a pair at this point in my life. Ugh. No one's going to give it to me. Just I'm just going to go buy myself. I'm a pair. like people at Walmart. Though those are the type of people that would buy it for themselves. Really? And like, yeah, like just eat, like munch on it while you're watching a game. I wonder if it's like one size fits all. You just <laughs> yeah. heat it up. The bigger uh, you are, gross. you know, <laughs> just gross. You dip it in ranch. There you go. Maybe an edible watch. swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> eat. It would disintegrate in the pool. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have tan lines. Uh, okay, well, things you don't have to think about because <laughs> you're a guy. These little things you take for granted. So. No, you're right. Yeah, you know what's funny, girls. Go out and they buy, like, sexy lingerie. Like, you have stores that sell that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, guys, we don't have that. Our lingerie just kind of happens when we wear underwear for too long. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> just gets holes in it. And it's kind of droopy. I, think, I thought guy lingerie was like a firefighter uniform or something. No, that's overdressed. What a pain in the ass. Seriously. Women like guys in uniforms. Like, mm-hmm. I wear a basketball uniform every day. <laughs> He does. He's wearing one right now. Is it even basketball season? Yeah, it oh, is. of I course told, it is. I totally knew that. No, you didn't. I know. God, I, so I wish bad. you knew. I'm so sorry. I wish you just knew anything about sports. Did you watch the Winter Olympics? Uh, it's okay if you didn't, because neither did I. <laughs> I hate nope. the Winter Olympics. <laughs> My son watches it. He gets into like the snowboarding stuff. It's yeah. like X Games. He likes okay. those those events. But like, it made me so proud when figure skating came on. He... And my son's like, "This is gay." Oh. And I yeah. was like, "Look, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but yes." He sounds like for... he's from Arizona. <laughs> Again, we're not political here, but nope. how dare that asshole for making us Arizonans act like that because, or, you know, people think we're uh, jerks now. What are you talking about? Oh, right. I forgot. You only watch sports. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. That, I watch television okay. shows. Okay. Well, never mind. It was what a political issue, the SB 1060. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And so everybody thinks Arizona people hate, was it gays and, yeah, and but here, Mexicans? Or hold on. I'm stop sure. talking. So... <laughs> Only you could tell me to stop talking, and I'm not going to reach your cross here feel rude. and punch you in the face. <laughs> I don't feel offended. I don't. Again, everyone listening, when it comes to politics, I know nothing. Nothing. I could name maybe five presidents, and four of them would be wrong. It's all the change he has in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the that bill. That got passed and then vetoed, right? Jam- yeah, vetoed. so it's gone. But isn't it just uh, the way that I heard about it? I don't read. I heard people talking about it. Is that it got way overblown and put it out of proportion? It did. Is it, it was something like a, a law that says a restaurant can not serve you based on your outward appearance, religion? Okay, right? Kind of. It's any business. Any business, first of all, in Arizona already has the right to refuse service. Yes, which is. It's already in place. Right. So, so the let's... the only thing, and I'm sorry to cut you off, the only thing that this is this bill really does is protect the business from getting sued in one of the million other ways that they can get sued. Okay? Now, I'm not saying they should have passed it or whatever. I have no stance on it. Because if somebody were to kick someone out of their restaurant or business because they're gay, it would get out. Like wildfire, no one would go to the store or restaurant, and it would burn down. So, what did it matter if it passed or not? Really? Well, what just blows my mind is if, if this bill. It sounds like something from some sad movie that came out twenty years ago. I literally have never had a conversation with a business owner that's like, "I'm going to turn money away." First yeah. of all, yeah, like. Oh, you're gay. I can't take your money. Said no one ever. <laughs> ever. I don't care how weird well, you are. Well, I don't are. know about that. I mean, like a prostitute, maybe. Even still. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just want to put this out there that us people in Arizona are not like that. This bill was just a bad representation of us. Maybe our legislature Floated like in that. and then floated out. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It did. It got blown out of proportion completely, I think. Yeah. But then again, this is coming from me who doesn't follow politics or listen to watch the news, nothing. So I'm as educated as my five-year-old son. Yeah, which is probably... He's a genius. <laughs> for a five-year-old. Now I'm a he's moron a for a 33-year-old, but he's very smart. <laughs> um, so speaking now- of my son, because we were just talking about gay people. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, my son is five years old, turned five a month ago. He's been throwing 
epic tantrums, like almost every day. And it's when he doesn't get his way that he throws these tantrums. And him, me, and his mom kind of give in to him most of the time. Just so he's quiet. Yeah, just so, all right, just here, fine, do whatever you want. And it's starting to become a big problem. And the latest one for me and him was I told him we're having a a bedtime now of 9 p.m. When it's 9 p.m., you go to bed. That's it. So if you want to play a video game, if you want to watch a show, plan ahead. I'll let you know when it's 8 o'clock so you now have an hour. And he said, cool. So then it became 9 o'clock, and I said, all right, time for bed. Turn the TV off, and he threw a tantrum of tantrums. He threw an Uno card at me. He punched me. He kicked me. He tried to tear down the curtains in the house. He ripped the sheets off of the bed, screaming, crying. And I didn't give in, but it was so hard not to because it's like, dude, I just want to go to bed myself. Like, <laughs> I'll let you watch a show. Get, But I didn't. What advice? Because you have two kids. Now they're girls, and girls are much easier than boys. <laughs> it's true. Um, well, you did the right thing by not giving in. A little trick is pretend you're going to bed always. I did. I laid in bed. That's why he took the sheets off. <laughs> oh, and he took my pillow and threw it well, in the family room. I have room. one one kid who has food allergies pretty bad. Not like in a Asperger's fake hyperactive way. She actually has like bad food allergies. But other than that, you just have to. They're what they're doing is they're uh, what is it when they test boundaries. So he's seeing how far he can push you. Just he does it to his mom too, though. And, but they have to, it's the phase they're going through. They have to get it out of their systems. And once they learn, then they learn. So I have to be real strict. Yeah. All right. And ignore him. He's doing that. He's expressing himself. You have to ignore that. So I have behavior. to ignore him expressing himself. Ignore his bad behavior. Okay. I guess. I don't know. I mean, look, I actually think it's hilarious. <laughs> and I had to cover my mouth because I was laughing so hard. Because <laughs> he was so angry. And just the what he was doing, was, it was so funny. And it's the stuff that they get mad about. You're just like, <laughs> Wow, yeah. I wish I could Well, get and the greatest that. thing, so he wanted to watch a show, and it's called Paw Patrol, with, like, <laughs> dogs and stuff. And I want to watch Paw Patrol! <laughs> Screaming, and I'm like, how stupid is that sentence? <laughs> Whenever in life did I think I'd hear that sentence screamed at me from the top of someone's lungs? Uh, and then me have to say, no, no, <laughs> no, we're not. But ignoring him is great. Because yeah. then it's like, now I can finally do what I want to yeah. do. Yeah, he's old enough where he's not going to get hurt. He's not a baby. Go ahead and ignore him. Yeah. Feels great. Well, I ignored him more when he was a baby. <laughs> but that's just me being a good father. He couldn't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when they learn to talk, watch yeah, out. Oh, it's, it's a problem. And then the other problem is, so I turn the TV off. He can reach the TV to turn it back on. Oh. And then it's like, I turn it off, he turns it on. I turn it off, he turns it on. And then it's going to break the TV. Oh, don't want him to do that. Well, what do I do? I don't know, pretend you're going to leave the house, pretend. When I put him in time out, he just gets up and, and runs away. drive and make him think you left. I don't know. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> I know. I've been leaving my kids lately. That's my new trick. But you have a nine-year-old. That's true. My parents left me alone when I was like five or six. I just tell her no fire. And they never came if home. You need anything. They never came home. Yeah. You've been on your own so since you were nine. So if anybody knows where my parents are, I'll post pictures of them on Facebook. Like, but they're old. They're 30-year-old photos. So I, I don't see them often. You're like that kid, but you're a <laughs> castaway, but a young kid. Mm-hmm. You're only friends of volleyball. Yeah, a Nerf, <laughs> Nerf football. <laughs> so you don't get hurt? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, how was your vacation? It was really good. Um, I did things... That I've never done before. Hold on, but let me rephrase that because for you it's not a vacation. Why not? You don't do anything <laughs> in the days you're not out of town. I don't pretend to you work just, at my fake real job. No, you just change homes for a week, maybe. <laughs> I got nothing. You're so, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I speak for the working man. You, uh, so you went to Hawaii. Yeah. My parents were at Hawaii at the same time you were. I didn't see him. Where did you go? We went to Kona. So, Kona Grill? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's weird. Like, you'd think there'd be all this weird island-infused food. Like, you know, I've been to Maui before, and it was really geared for tourism. And this place really wasn't. Like, people actually live there. They're not mad about tourism. They're really nice people. It's a small town. So, I don't know. It's just really different. It's kind of like... Everyone's waiting for Elvis to come back from 1950. All the decor everywhere. It was just like really 
I don't know. And that's where you chose to go on vacation? Well, no, just like the hotel we stayed at was kind of like... How many times do you go to Hawaii a year? I don't know. Well, since we've been doing the show twice. So. <laughs> so 30 episodes in. Every 15 episodes, Nancy needs a break from the show and, and head out to Hawaii. We film once a week. Jesus Christ. We must get paid a lot to do this show to be able to afford the vacation every 15 weeks. That's right. But, uh, We're on a Kickstarter only, program. Yeah, only give the money to Nancy. That's Our a fantastic. show's on a Kickstarter program. Are you familiar with those? Yep. I don't know how I feel about that. Why? Anyway, well... Only because I don't have one. Just make I would, one. I want to. I would <laughs> donate to one happily, but maybe just because I don't have one. Anyway, let me tell you two things I did that I've never done before. First, we went night diving. Oh, with, cool. Yeah, manta rays, the yeah. stingrays, but way bigger. So, first of all, I'm kind of scared of the ocean, especially at night during well, shark yeah. season. And it's considered shark season because it's whale breeding season. No, no, no. When the whales have babies. So there's baby whales out, yeah. so then there's sharks out. I think it's shark season all the time. Right. Cause sharks are in the ocean. ocean all the time. Right, exactly. They don't, like, leave. It's like, ah, oh, guys, hey, got to head up to shore. It's November. <laughs> I'm swimming south. We all know what to do, so we got to gotta head out of town. But we'll be back. Hey, three months, Larry. We'll, we'll can reconnect our game in three months <laughs> when we get back to town. So we did this night dive, and it was scary because you're in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the night, and it was you know, there was probably like 50 other people there, so I'm thinking maybe it's a numbers game at this point, and I'm pretty fast, you know? Yeah, no, you can swim, probably swim much faster than a shark in water. Well, I was thinking of the person right next to me and on the other side of me. Okay, so... I'm hoping I'm faster than them. That's all that... Hey, as long as you're faster than the slowest person, you're good. Or just less tasty smelling? I don't know. No, they don't care. Good news is I didn't get eaten by a shark, and I that swim... That is good news. Manta rays. They but were you everywhere. did lose a daughter out there, and... Let's take a moment of silence. Hey, it's a numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> I chummed her. Would you sacrifice one of your children for yourself? No. You would put yourself first? Yeah. Ah, see, that's the difference between you and me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I had the opportunity at a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> I threw myself in front of a car I thought Did was going to really? hit my kid. Yeah. Jesus. Just once. Why don't you just both get out of the way? Well, that was the plan. Ideally. But it put me first, so. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Anything can happen in a Walmart parking lot. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, so, okay, that was one. What was okay, the other the thing? The other thing was zip lining. Oh, I love zip lining. Yeah, I didn't think I would, but I really it's liked so it. It's so fun. And after you're done, you realize, like, that was kind of stupid. You're just holding, you, you're literally not really doing anything. They did it for me. Yeah, you just sit there, and then you go from one side to the other of the rope. And then hook on and do it again. But you're not doing anything, but it's fun. It was really fun. And I did some cool tricks there. Like, okay, on this, you know, on this jump, free fall. Or, you know, pretend you're going to fall backwards off this cliff. So that was kind of cool because I've never known what it was like to fall backwards off a cliff. Now I know. (laughs) And it's great. You're going to keep doing it. (laughs) One day you'll get so good at it you won't even need a rope. (laughs) Free basing or (laughs) what is that called? I think some, yeah. That might be doing drugs. I'm not sure. jumping? Base jumping. Free basing is doing drugs. Is it? (laughs) Yeah, you heard. know too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it was a really good trip, and it was really cool. Well, good. I'm glad you had fun. How are you? No. While you were gone, I did another showcase at Stand Up Scottsdale. So thanks, everybody, who came out. Um, it was a lot of fun. Did all new material. And I won crowd favorite. Again, it's two for two. Good. Uh, I'll be doing that show again on March 30th. And it's going to be a great show. So not kidding, everybody come out to that show. I really want to sell it out because it's, it's a fun. It's, everybody's a good comic that goes up really funny. And so and they, we bring it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so March 30th is the next one for uh, Stand Up Scottsdale, 7 p.m. show. Come check me out. And uh, that's all I got. I mean, I went up last night. I completely bombed. And, uh, and it sucked. I tried new material there that I had just come up with, too. I mean, it was just a mess from the start. Um, but that happens. It's a learning experience. And uh, no matter how good you are, how long you've been doing stand-up, it's a learning experience every single time. You get something out of it. All right. What did you learn last time? Last that time. I shouldn't drink so much before <laughs> I go up on stage. Uh, <laughs> I was out st- outside hanging out with other comics for a while. And then uh, the guy running the show came out. He said, Kevin, you're up next. And I stood up, and I was like, I should sit back down. (laughs) (laughs) What were you drinking? 
Uh, just some beers. Oh. But uh, but yeah, just uh, I won't be drinking again. Like ever. Yeah. Because you're that guy. You have a bad experience, and you're like, nope, never again for me. Yeah. That's why no one can touch you. Yeah, well, hey, that's what once, that's what I learned. No one can touch him. That's what I learned, dude. It was it was terrible. People laughed, I guess, but it wasn't the kind of laughter I wanted, and and it, I just fumbled. Was there people there that you knew, or was it just no. kind of like stopped in? Okay, oh, so it wasn't like something. A lot of people came to see you. No, no, no. Nobody came to see me. Oh, well, then that's a good time to bomb. <laughs> it's an awful time to bomb, but okay. Well, I guess never is a good time to bomb, but if you're going to do call. it. Good call. Good um, call. All right, what do you want to talk about? Well, <laughs> the news. Um, sorry, we can talk about something else. But I heard this funny thing on the news that all these kids are getting <laughs> head lice. Ew. I know. From doing selfies. Ew. How like, the hell do you do but that? The group selfies, you know, where like a bunch of kids get yeah, in one bit and they're like, uh, oh, do a selfie. And everybody's rubbing their hair with against right. each other. But head lice still? Like Well, I didn't know that existed. Okay, I, I didn't know okay. head lice was actually a real thing. Oh, you've never I had it. I guess it is. No, I didn't have it. You've had it? I've had it, yeah. Do you have to shave your head? No. Oh. Well, I what, had you it when I was a extra kid. Extra pert plus or something and then it's done. <laughs> Um, maybe some medicated tomato juice, Sh- like shampoo. a bath of tomato juice. I know because my both my kids got it one year, and really? I had to buy this medicated shampoo. It was like a hundred and fifty dollars a bottle. What? I tried every natural remedy you can think of, and it just wouldn't go away. So I finally just dumped chemicals on there. hundred fifty dollars a bottle. Yeah. And what do you use? The whole bottle? I didn't. I only used one bottle. So if it ever happens again, I have a bottle. You have net. Well, does it expire? I sure hope not. Okay, if it doesn't, let me know because I want Brayden <laughs> to get it so then I can I just may get just it over. I sell with. it. Can you only get it once, like chicken pox? I uh, no. You can. I think you can get it a lot. Damn it. Well, I'm sure you have a son. Do you put your school. head? You're going to get letters saying there's head lice in your class. I brought it there. <laughs> do you? <laughs> That's like the kids' STD is lice. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you been hugging? <laughs> I did a selfie with Susie. She's a dirty whore. Yeah, that's her fifth one this year I've heard about. Uh, what? Uh, I forgot what I was going to ask. Head lice. Yeah, I know. I, I had a, a question. Oh, do you put your head back on the seat at the movie theater? Yeah. You don't care? I don't Because I think that's a leading way to get it well i only had lice once when i was a kid and i'm pretty sure i got it from another kid in my class yeah yeah huh probably got it from you you no, were in my class I, d- I've n- I didn't have it <laughs> i've never had head lice sure i wear hats all the time oh okay whatever i don't have i got it on my legs i have leg lice <laughs> they call them crabs <laughs> oh, yeah, <whatever. laughs> right, my doctor doesn't tell me i still go to a pediatrician <laughs> <laughs> Your pediatrician says you have lice. Yeah. If you went to a doctor, they'd tell you had crabs. <laughs> well played. I like it. It's one way to stay disease free. Well, it looks like you have a uh, head lice, big guy. <laughs> oh, a doctor. Sucker. Can You're I have a, a lollipop when I leave? Well, yeah, and you're going to need some medication. <laughs> <laughs> so stop by your pharmacy. And some alone time, too. Ugh, God. No selfies. Uh, <laughs> so, oh. Uh, I was thinking, this is off subject, but, um, like, you know how, well, I did a joke this past weekend about dogs, like, wearing clothes and stuff, and then wearing shoes, and then I walk like the dog, uh, which is pretty funny. But That uh, was funny. I saw that. Part of of it, which I didn't have time to do, I just skipped over and didn't do it, was, uh, like, if dogs could talk, you know, some people are like, man, I wish dogs could talk. It'd be so awesome. Oh. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> I agree with you. And first, let's point out the obvious. If a dog could talk, they would tell everyone your business. What people do at home, alone in air quotes, the dog is always there watching you, always. judging you, thinking about you. Mostly just jealous. Joining in with you, whatever you're doing. So the dog... Literally, the first thing out of their mouth, if they're like, all of a sudden, hey, dogs can talk. My like, my dog would turn to me and be like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> you are weird. <laughs> oh, my God. And feed me for once. Not, <laughs> Not your leftovers, actual food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the other thing people don't think about is not like, like, dogs aren't that smart. They're really not that smart. 
So just because a dog can talk doesn't mean that they now understand everything. If you think a five-year-old is annoying with all their questions, a dog is going to be much worse with their annoying questions. And like, okay, when they want to go out, they go sit by the door. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of hear, oh, yeah, they're by the door. Dude, if they could talk, hey, 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 dad, uh, hey, I'm by the door. (laughs) Want to go out? (laughs) Hey, dad, I'm by the door. (sighs) <sighs> when is this asshole going to wake up? I'm by the door! <laughs> and then you go let him out, and all you hear outside is, What's that smell? What do, what do I smell out here? <laughs> Hello? 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 Are you a dog? On the other side of the wall, are you a dog? And the other dog, Yeah, I'm a dog. Well, I, too, am a dog. Hey, let's hang out. Oh, we can't. Let's get our parents to take us out front. <laughs> dad, Dad, I just met someone. Like, oh, my God, I got too many kids in this house. No one would own a dog anymore. Mm-mm. But finally, finally, people that have dogs and no kids can be like, it's just like having a kid. Yeah. <laughs> now they talk. You do a good dog. My dog is so great. We talk about my dog a lot. But she is the biggest dog in my neighborhood, not like, oh. She's the biggest she... dog in this hemisphere. Yeah, pretty much. But she's so funny because she doesn't bark. She's just like, she knows she's the biggest dog. She doesn't have to bark. So I wouldn't mind if she could talk, but she knows a lot of shit about me. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> could you imagine taking but your dog for a walk? But I don't think she'd be annoying. Dude, taking your dog for a walk and you run into like somebody else who's walking their dog and like the dogs walk up to each other and they're like, like they just want to say something about you to them. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. It's like you know, she takes long showers <laughs> and just keeps walking. The other dog like starts She's a sniffing terrible you. Singer. Yeah. <laughs> like just something stupid. <laughs> my dad watches four hours of porn when my mom leaves. <laughs> like <laughs> two hours when she's home. <laughs> you should see what my dad does when everyone's home. <laughs> What's so home. funny is when, um, I, how do you say when my husband and I closed the door, if we're lucky enough, we get to kick the dog out. And she's huge, so sometimes it's a task. And if she doesn't want to go out, she doesn't go out. She <laughs> just lays down. And she weighs more than both of us. And she's 12, so we can't really push her around. Yeah. And um, when we open the door back to let her in, she's mad. <laughs> uh, really? She pouts, walks the other way, won't look at us. She'll walk up just to walk away. <laughs> just to give you that disappointing she look. She does. She'd walk up to us and then walk away. And, like, oh. and if she could talk, she would just be like, that Emma, Kaylee. Wake up. Wake up. We got some work to do. Let's knock <laughs> on mom all and dad's knock door. On the door. Yeah. <laughs> totally, man. Dogs talking we would just it, be, We're good. it would be the worst, worst thing ever. That's why a dog is a man's best friend. Men have wives, but all they do is talk, right? Wives? Girlfriends, women in their All life. All women do is talk. Right. That's why a man's best friend, his very best friend, is yeah, that talk. who can't talk. Yeah. 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 And if they could, then it would be like only women would have dogs. Right. But see, and here's the other thing is everyone thinks cats are so smart. Why do you think a cat's smart? I know you don't. Don't even give me But started. other people, I'm not a cat person either. I think hate cats, cats are smart because cats are assholes. Yeah. That doesn't make you smart. That makes you an asshole. Cats are horrible things. I Listen, agree. I hate cats. I've said it a million times. I'll say it a million and one more time. I hate cats, and they hate me. It's a mutual disrespect that we have for each other. They have claws that go inside their hands, and you can't see them. And then at the last second, they come out and they slash you with it. You, they can't be trusted. No, cats can never cats be are trusted. Cats are wild animals. They're not supposed to be. No, cats. the only cat that I like is a tiger, and you can't oh. keep those. And they're really dangerous. But you know it's coming. If a tiger gets you, you're not. You can't be surprised. You know the people who get exotic animals, and then they get attacked by their own exotic yeah, animal, and they're shocked. Like, oh my god! Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, you have a bear. It's a bear. I can't believe Frosted Flakes attacked me. Well, dude, it's a fucking tiger. <laughs> tiger. Yeah. Oh, yeah he attacked you with diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> they're great. Yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, cats, they're just awful things. I, uh, it's, it, you're not, look, there's such thing as a crazy cat lady, right? Oh, right. There's no such thing as a crazy dog man. No. All right? 
Having a lot of dogs, yeah, that's probably like, dude, why do you have so many dogs? Well, but it's I live not on a like... ranch and I have six horses and they do some work for me around the house. Like, if you have a lot of dogs, there's typically a reason. Right. Unless you're breeding them illegally and then you're an asshole. Yeah, if you have a lot of cats, the only reason is because you have no life. You have no personal life. You have no social life. You live with a bunch of cats and I hate you as a person. I... Because you've made this life decision to infest your house with things that can't be trusted. I hope that they burn your house down and don't pay the electricity bill. There you go. It's well, well spoken. Thank you. But I don't understand the cat person because your cat people, they're typically lonely. Yes. Um, which ensures your loneliness. If you have a cat, it doesn't want to go outside. It doesn't want to be walked. It doesn't want affection from you. It wants cat food. That's it. I don't get it. You can teach a cat it to shit. It doesn't fill in the a, void. You can teach a cat to shit in the toilet. So therefore, you never have to leave the house again. I don't want have to have to go to the bathroom company. and have to wait for the cat to finish before I can go. <laughs> that would be terrible. It's awful. It's awful. Dude, okay. I am. I was gonna say you and cats. Jeez. I was at a friend's house. He has a cat. Any dude with a cat. You're not even closeted gay. You're just gay. All right. No offense. And it's fine. But be outward with it. If, if, you, if you're like, hey, man, I got a, a cat named Rufus. Well, you also have a boyfriend named Joey. Oh. Uh, he has a cat. And I went to go to the bathroom to go pee, right? And it smelled like someone had just recently shit in the bathroom. And I was like, it's just me and him here. Like, what? He didn't go to the bathroom, so now I'm assuming someone else is in the house. And I come out, I'm like, dude, your bathroom smells awful. He's like, oh, man, why? What did you do? I'm like, I didn't do anything for the first time ever in life. You can't put this one on me. I go back in, the cat shit in the shower. (laughs) Like, jumped in the shower, shit in it, and left. Uh, What a fucking terrible animal. Frogs don't do that stuff. No. Do you have any pets besides a dog? Not my son. Oh. Yeah. He's going to want a pet. Kids always want weird pets. He has pets. I've had three he has turtles. two dogs. Besides it, it, I a dog. I mean, that's, that's your Dogs are not your kid's pet. They're your pet. Then kids always want some crazy pet. Like, my kids want a hamster. We've had three turtles. I don't, I don't know. I don't want a rodent. I don't like them. You have rodents. I do. I have. Oh, my God. Before we went out of town, I find out I have roof rats. Why do I find out I have roof rats? Because my cable goes out. So... We called the cable company. I swear I paid my bill. I don't know why my cable's out. So Billy goes rummaging around the ceiling and cuts some holes in the ceiling and finds our cable for the TV. It's totally chewed down to the wire. Like, what the fuck? Roof rats are terrible. Yeah, they made my TV go out. That's why awful. were you feeding roof rats? I was feeding them rubber cable and <laughs> metal. Like, they're assholes. Do you have, uh, like... Hanging fruit by your no, house? but all my neighbors do. Ah, so that's, that's how it why. happens. Yeah, and I bet you they don't have roof rats. No, they probably do. There's just a lot of them. Look at the rat. Do they travel? All right, so we get some traps. First, we get the sticky traps. It's like a piece of I don't know, cardstock, yeah. and it's really sticky. So we pull them out the next day. There's little paw prints everywhere, all over the sticky. They just like walked oh. all over it. Took the food and left. So then we get the trap that snaps their neck. The actual like yeah. rat traps. We put peanut butter in there. No one can resist peanut butter. No, I know. And you found me the next morning <laughs> laying there with my neck snapped. <laughs> so this little rat... <laughs> Just we, wanted a sandwich. Oh, we get one. It was... Oh my God, it was so sad. And I always say I'm not an animal person, but I think I might be. Um, You're 100% an animal person. <laughs> you have more animals ever than anyone. I know. Seriously. I, know. I asked Braden, I'm like, you want to go to the zoo? He's like, we're going to Nancy's? <laughs> So we get the trap, and there's a rat, and it got its neck caught, and then it kind of got away a little bit. So we got it out, you know. The rat? Yeah. Like, we just kind of scooped it into this little box. Oh, you're and gross. of course, my kids are like, oh, I'm going to make it a house. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that, because we're probably just going to get rid of it. Like, they think they're going to get to keep it. Like, Ew. I know. A really... rat? So we get it out. We put it in a little box, and it's so cute. It's like... Not even gross at all. It was this little fuzzy brown rat. And, Ew. And its neck was broken. <laughs> and it was so sad. I wanted to take it to the vet. Ugh. I considered taking it to the vet after I spent money to it's kill like the it. Christopher Reeve of rats. Oh, my God. It was so cute. So then we're like, okay, well, its neck snapped. We can't save it now. We just have to, like, give it a quick death. So we... <laughs> 
<laughs> Shoot it with a BB gun in the head. The fucking thing won't die. We shot it three times. Because yeah, you're 100 feet away from it. No, we was right there. You went point blank. To the headshot. Gun to the temple. But this may be illegal, what I'm saying. I'm yeah. not sure. Well, it was a BB gun. And it won't, got won't fucking die. Sniper rifles and shotguns in your house. You chose a BB gun to kill the thing. You want to put it out of its misery? Well, then we... Stuff a grenade in it. <laughs> All right, so then... Nothing's killing this poor rat. I feel so bad at this point. Yeah, so he's got a broken neck. And he's and been you're shot just his three face times with, with BBs. <laughs> and he's defending it off like, Jesus Christ, just give me the gun. I'll do it myself. Yeah. Put me up on top of the wall. I'll just jump off. So we took a shovel to its head. Are you serious? I didn't know what else to do. I had to end it fast. You did it? Yes. No. Oh, it was so sad. I told my husband that the next one we catch out of the roof is a pet. That's that. I could never kill another rat. But then I read an article while I was out of town saying that some little girl died from a pet store rat. So you can buy rats in a yeah. pet store. And it bit her, and it had some rat disease, and she died. What? How old was she? Six? I don't know. My Appropriately kids. inappropriate, bringing you the positive news stories. So, I had a friend in college that had a rat for a pet, and a friend and I went and visited him. And his roommates and stuff. He lived with three other guys. And we didn't know that he had a rat. And he brings it out to show us. And it's like a huge, gross rat. Yeah. They get the size of and small cats. My and my friend that I came with sort of freaking out. Get the thing with me. And I know my friends pretty well. I know that when you do that, the rest of the weekend, they're going to put the rat on you while you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. And... And I didn't like it either. I was kind of freaked out just as much as my friend, but I played it cool. So I was like, oh, video. cool rat, man. And like, kind of like pet it yeah. on its back. Then I washed my hand for like a three and a half hours. Um, with and gasoline. So, yeah. And so the rest of the weekend, they didn't do anything to me with it. They're like, oh, he didn't care. And uh, which I did. Bottom of my heart, I was like, where is that fucking rat? Dude, get that thing away from me. <laughs> my friend freaked out. So they messed with him all weekend. Put the rat in the sheets when he was sleeping. Oh, no. Like on a plate when he was going to eat food. <laughs> it, was, it was so, and he freaked out every time. Aww. But why would you own a rat? I had a rat when I was a kid. A rat or a mouse? No, a rat. Um, why? I'll, well, I'll tell you why. My mom was a fifth grade teacher. And she told her students that they could get a class pet. So they all decided on a rat. So we got this rat from the pet Why? store. Why? Get like a it, wolverine. <laughs> right? That makes more sense. <laughs> when we got it, we picked it out. It was little and cute and just like a mouse. Then, it, <laughs> then over the years, it grew into a rat. So oh. over the weekends or any long holiday, we'd always take the rat home. How big did it get? Like the size of a cat. It was <sighs> not even that it was so gross, but its tail was gross. Yeah, the tail is disgusting. Yeah. It's long and it, it's gross. But it was really smart. Yeah, the tail it is It was nice. Gross. It was cool. Oh. I'm wearing flip flops. I gotta kick my feet up on the desk. <laughs> this is disgusting. There's, I know there's a rat in here. There it is. Where is it? I can feel it. Roof. Um, did you take it for walks? No. You can put a leash around its neck and take no. it for a walk. If I could have, I probably would have. Well, you could have. But we lived out in the desert, and there was a lot of coyotes, so it didn't seem safe. No, it's not safe at all. But it's not safe for a child to be out there with coyotes. If they're on a leash. A coyote on a leash. A child on a leash. All right, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> All right, so that's funny that we're talking about animals because I want to get a pig so bad. I've heard they're good pets. How is that a good pet? Well, like not like a huge oh farm pig, God. but a small pig. Yeah. They can be like trained like dogs. How is that a good – no, they can't. I just want something different. What would you name them? Cupcake. I don't know. Cupcake? Maybe sprinkles. I, oh, my God. I don't know. And just bedazzle its skin? I'm not really a bedazzler. Are you going to name the thing Cupcake or Sprinkles? Maybe maybe I'll name him Hurley. Stan Hurley. That's uh, my favorite book I character. I don't know. I, I hope you get evicted from your house. <laughs> I mean, it's my house. I know. <laughs> you hope my lawn dies. You hope I get evicted. Yeah, yeah. You hope my recycle bin doesn't get taken out. And you hope I got the When did I say flu. that? So a while ago. I did? And it didn't get taken out. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I Wait, no, I hope a you lot. got the flu. Don't say that. I said it too. I'm very ago. susceptible. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I have a low immune system. Do you really? I have no idea. <laughs> I think of myself as getting sick a lot though. I'm no I've seen you sick once. Have you? Yeah. And none from alcohol, so Yeah. yeah well, well I'm a champion. Well <laughs> champion. I'm not like most guys that buckle under the pressure of being sick mm. and cry like a baby. 
to get the man cold. That's actually not true at all. I'm the biggest baby in the world when I get sick. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I call the hospital the second. Uh, I, it's me again. I have the sniffles. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> Yeah. You have them on Skype. No, I don't call 911. I just dial 9 and my phone knows. Straight it, through to the yeah, hospital. Yeah, it, it speed dials to, to Susan. She's the front desk over at the hospital. The triage. Um, yeah. So Susan takes my calls and she says, what is it today? Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm glad you asked. As the tears start boiling up. And I say, I'm a little achy. I'm a little achy today. And I think it's the start of something. <laughs> and she, well, let's backtrack. What uh what's your first symptom? And I said, "Well, this is my first symptom symptom uh the Susie." Obnoxious phone call. Yeah. I said, "I'm achy." And she said, "Well, did it start today?" And I said, "Yes. Yes, it did because last night I, I entered a dance competition and I won. Good. Um it didn't exist, but uh but that's what I do when I go to nightclubs. And she said, well, I think you're just sore from the dancing. And I said, I am sore from this whole conversation. <laughs> How did you guys manage to stay awake while I just told that horrible story? I don't know how I managed to stay awake. But I'm you, off today, man. I'm just not What you funny. don't know is they've outsourced your calls already. The first 100 were an indicator. They've sent your insurance information to, what is it, India? Is that where we outsource our phone calls to now? Yeah. So now you're talking to a call center, oh. explaining your symptoms. The oh. hospital has no time for you, nor does the pediatrician's office. Oh, man. They have outsourced you to India. Did I tell you my pediatrician's name was no. Dr. Beanstalk? <laughs> Pretty sure I did. His name was Dr. Beanstalk. I like it. And he died of cancer. Aww. And that's when I realized that doctors could die from stuff. And I was like, why am I going to this doctor? He can't cure himself. Right. Because I was an asshole kid. I didn't know any better. Um, I saw a pediatrician for a long time. Really? Yeah, I think I finally stopped, like, last year. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I take Braden, I just ask, hey, Doc, can you look at this real quick? You just ask some questions. <laughs> I tell him that Braden has these symptoms, meaning it's actually me. Yeah. He's like, well, how's Braden been feeling? I'm like, well, uh, he's a little stuffy. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, he, he's been coughing a lot. And uh, at night, he doesn't sleep well. And they're like, you sound a little nasally, Mr. Friedman. No, no, I'm fine. I just, it's my son. Uh, can we get medicine for him? And he weighs a lot for the age of five. He's roughly 180 pounds, even though he doesn't look like it. Yeah. Oh, shit storms. I'm just, I'm out of it, man. Well, we, Kevin and I somehow were both sick, which is weird, because I don't get sick, and I don't, I don't think he goes anywhere or touches anyone in order to get sick, so That's that true. sucked for both of us. But, um, so I'll tell a story real quick, and then <laughs> um, when I came home from my trip, no one told me that my kid lost a tooth, not just any tooth, her big front tooth. There's actually two big front teeth. One of the big front teeth. One of them, all right, that was the snowboarding trip when we knocked her front tooth out. Okay. And she put it back in. It grew right back in. And it, it connected, and it's in still. Well, she lost uh, her other front tooth. So I go to pick her up, and it's like 11 o'clock. We've been traveling since, I don't know, all day. And she has no tooth. I'm like, fuck, we have no cash on us. And I didn't even have chewing gum. So we get home, and it's so late, and neither of us have any money. And I'm rummaging through the kids' rooms looking for cash of theirs to put under her pillow from the Tooth Fairy. I found nothing. So it was really nice that my husband went to the gas station at midnight after traveling all day to get her money from the Tooth Fairy. That's cool. How much money did you give her? Six bucks. Six dollars for one tooth? Yeah. I thought that was pretty nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Whenever there's, like, trauma, like, my other daughter loses all her teeth because she's been hit in the head so many times. So we give her, like, 20 bucks each because it usually came with, like, blood and stitches. Jesus. I always thought that was, you know. When my son starts losing teeth, stitches. I'm just going to put receipts under his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, fuck, I'm so tired. I just want to go home yeah. or go to bed. I was home. I finally was home. And all I could think to do was look in their rooms for cash. And I found nothing. Then you were going to take their own cash that's right, I was. and give it back to them. And risk disappointing them that the tooth fairy doesn't come? Yeah. 
they would probably want me to take their own. Camera. You know what? I'm gonna leave. A, um, I'm gonna leave a note. So my son's gonna lose a tooth. Oh my god, the tooth fairy's coming. This is so cool. And I'm Jewish, so I don't feel bad about this. I'm gonna leave a note that just says Santa Claus isn't real either. <laughs> <laughs> Like you rolled the dice, like you rolled the dreidel, and this is what came up. This is your dreidel number. Santa Claus isn't real. What is on the dreidel? Like dice have numbers. So you can I don't catch know. that to a game. Yeah, I don't know. So is the dreidel like if you roll this way, Tooth Fairy brings you no money. If you roll this way, there's no Santa Claus. Like is it just a bunch of disappointing No, I things? don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should. It means something. Like it, it is a game. It means You're stuff. I don't not know though. Jewish. I am 100% cheap. Jewish. I'm 100%. Both of my parents are Jewish. Both their parents were Jewish. Yet you know nothing of your religion. No. But I'm, I, I am of Jewish descent. Of Jewish my descent. My nose says so. I'm, I don't know what descent I would be considered. I'm definitely not American. You're not? I'm, from what I know, man, I, my family's been in America for a long time. My family just got here like not that long ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Like what? what from come the Czech ago? Republic. Like from oh, like no. not that long ago. Gross! You guys are hairy. I'm not hairy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enough hair. You wear deep V-necks. Just the right amount of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Gross! I'm like Ron Burgundy. Ugh. Well, how much? What time are we at? Too long. Forty-five minutes. Oh really? Yeah. Oh god! I must be so bored. I thought <laughs> we were like four bad. hours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, let's get out of here. Okay. Might as well. All right. I got a big night ahead of me. Oh, so this is I was watching The Wire, right? Oh, yeah. I'm um, a season and a half in. First season was good. Second season, really boring. Um, but I hear it's like good the greatest show ever. Like the first episode of Breaking Bad. Everyone's like, uh, that can't get oh, into it. The first it. couple the seasons first of Breaking Bad were terrible, terrible for me. Real boring and slow. But that, the yeah, that's, a, was bad. that's actually exactly how this feels. It's just slow okay. and ugh. So now everybody's saying True Detective, which is on HBO, is like the greatest show. So I got season one today, so I'm going to watch some of them okay. and see how it is. Because I love TV. I love TV. Yeah. My dog knows it. Yeah. <laughs> That's seriously my dog. Literally, my dog. Would- <laughs> what would the first words for your dog be? Really, what would they be? Put me on the couch. She can't get on the couch that's herself. That's all it would be, put me on the couch? Yeah, that's her favorite thing to do. So she can't get on the couch herself because she's too old. So she just puts her front paw. Like, she waits till we're kind of settled down for the night. And she walks up to the couch and puts her front paws on the couch. And she just waits until... <laughs> so you have to pick her hind yeah. legs up and, and swing her <laughs> And I her can't around. do it because she's twice my size. Yeah. So my husband has to do it. But she's so funny because she knows he'll be right there. Oh, okay, CJ, I'm coming. So she just gets on there and she waits. Sometimes, you know, she'll have to wait a minute or so. But she's so confident that he's coming. She just puts her paws up and waits. And she can't get down by herself either. So she knows if she's up there, she'll be stuck if no one comes to get her. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. then you're done. So she's like a 200-pound, 110-year-old person in equivalence. Oh, God. What an old, heavy person. She's so old and so big. 110. In dog years, she's huge. Right? Right. She's like 110 Holy years old. Shit. She's like 200 pounds. Well, maybe not quite. She's yeah, wait, shrunk 10, over the years. Yeah, like 108? Mm-hmm. Wait. No. She'll be 12 in a couple weeks. No, she's not even 100 years old. What's the difference? When your lifespan's she's 84. 12. When her breed says the longest they'll ever live ever is 12. There's like one on record living to 13. And she'll be 12 <laughs> in two weeks. She's 100 and a lot. No, she's 84. You're 84 in dog years. She's old. Uh, in dog years, I'm like 550 <laughs> you, years you old. You said something earlier. You're like, every time I see her, she's had some new surgery, like an old person. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. She's at the doctor getting <laughs> shit done all the time. <laughs> I said I was going to be your dog for Halloween. <laughs> And that, <laughs> to get me into the spirit of it, I, I, I really have to learn the character, so you have to take me to the doctor every two to three weeks. I'd spend thousands of dollars on you every two to three weeks, exactly. And you have to stop bathing. Like, Maybe that's what, fine, I won't go to the pediatrician anymore, I'll go to the veterinarian. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. I'm going to get you one of those cones for your neck. I'm here to get neutered. 
Is this where we go? Is this how my friend sent me here? No, that's the first thing a dog would say. Don't neuter me. (laughs) Why? No. If they came now, they'd be like, why did you do that, man? It hurt really bad. (laughs) You want to go through it? Well, yeah. Let's have fun. When you're sleeping, yeah, you might not wake up so happy. I don't trust you anymore, Mooks. (laughs) You have trust issues. When we got uh, Mooks spayed, call a spade a spade, and she got eye surgery at the same time. Um, they so, cut her nails too that same day. Huh? They cut her nails that same Maybe, day. Maybe just My to dog throw has it to in. get put down to get her nails cut. Yeah. So I remember picking her up and just her walking. She had the big cone on her head. <laughs> so funny. And it would get stuck in the cracks of like the concrete and the <laughs> tile in the house. And she would just keep walking forward until it like just covered the ground and she'd be stuck yeah. in the ground. Um, but she walked like so depressed. She was Aww. so out of it for like a week. She had to stay at my parents' house because the other dog, Layla, was like in a liquor face and tear out stitches. Uh, Sad. Oh, it was it was such a terrible time for her. So I'm sure she'd bring that up. For her. Yeah, I'm sure she'd bring it yeah, up. Yeah, she'd blame you. Well, my dog has... always blames one of us. When we take her anywhere or leave her somewhere, she always decides to blame one of us. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I want to put the picture of her on our page because she had ear surgery right before we left out of, of town. Of course she did. Yeah, she wanted to give... We just hadn't spent money on her yeah, in a not? couple weeks. So right before we go out of town, we have to have ear surgery for her. So we bring her home, and she's completely whatever on those medication. Like yeah. Anesthesia. And her tongue won't stay in her mouth. <laughs> so we have pictures of her with her tongue resting on the, on the hardwood floor. And I was worried about her. I was trying to get her to drink water because I think they're supposed to. And she wasn't with it yet, but I pushed it. So eventually she just like couldn't hold her head up anymore, and she's... <laughs> Got her tongue just in the water, but not drinking. <laughs> she could die. Well, I thought she was going to die. Yeah. And then I reread the paperwork, and it said she probably won't eat or drink for the next, you know, 12 to 15 hours or something. Oh, she's so then so I felt big. better. Yeah. All right. So let's post that picture because it's really funny. All right. Let's post pictures of dogs with tongues out. <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing now. <laughs> Our show's going to dwindle into cute videos of kittens. No, fuck no. The day it does that, I am out. Wait, just to be clear, you hate cats and kittens? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. Anything that's a cat that isn't a tiger or a lion, I hate. Okay. House cats, like that kind of shit, I hate those. Okay. With a passion. And they hate me. It's not a problem. (laughs) We're, We're all cool with not getting along. All pussy hates you. I get it. I get it. Okay. Just kidding. Smile. Statistics may back up. <laughs> it's a numbers game. Like I said with the sharks. Okay. So. All right, guys. Look, we're out of here. Uh, thanks for supporting the show. What? March 30th is your show? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep telling everybody okay. about it. Um, yeah, March 30th, 7 p.m. Stand up Scott's Day. I'll be there. I'll make you laugh. I promise. Um, and support this show. You tell two of your friends to listen to the show. That's that's your homework for this week. Get two friends to listen to Appropriately Inappropriate. And uh, and then tell us that you did on the Facebook page. And we'll have a contest. Whoever can prove that they got the most listens, we will send you a t-shirt. Um, uh, probably like one of my Hurley shirts or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one of Kevin's pairs of basketball shorts. <laughs> I will send you a signed pair of basketball He's gonna shorts. He's going to give you two pairs of flip-flops from Old Navy, <laughs> two for five, a signed pair of basketball drawers, and what else? Edible underwear. <gasps> Did you just call them basketball drawers? Drawers. And edible underwear. Right. Fundies. You... <laughs> You're gross. Signed. Good night. Good night. Hi, this is Jeff from the 12A Podcast. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this show, please make sure to check out more on foredradio.com.